Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're breaking down pancreatitis, patho, signs and symptoms, nursing care, and the must-know NCLEX tips. Now for my Simple Nursing members, grab this study guide to help the GI knowledge stick when it matters most. Let's dive in. The pathophysiology is very simple. In pancreatitis, we have inflammation of the pancreas. So anytime you see the word itis, just think inflammation. So in pancreatitis, this inflammation comes from autodigestion of the pancreas. Basically, the pancreas' own digestive enzymes have accidentally activated early. Now, as you know, the main functions of the pancreas is exocrine and endocrine. The exocrine part is to produce digestive enzymes, which helps break down food and is a critical part of digestion. And the endocrine is for secretion of insulin and glucagon to stabilize glucose balance, which we cover in the diabetes lectures. Now, the enzymes are the key here. They are like ticking time bombs to break down and digest food. But when they're activated early inside the pancreas, they actually digest the pancreas. So the three key enzymes to know is protease, which breaks down protein. Lipase, one of the biggest affected by pancreatitis, breaks down fats. So just think lipids and lipase, lipid for fat. And lastly, amylase breaks down carbs or carbohydrates. Now, if the pancreatic duct is blocked for any reason, say from inflammation in liver cirrhosis or hepatitis, or let's just say a gallstone has floated down and got stuck, well, this means that the enzymes can't get out of the pancreas and into the intestine and accidentally prematurely activate within the pancreas. It's kind of like having a pirate ship and you know how they shoot out cannonballs. But what if those cannonballs explode within the pirate ship and sink your ship? Well, in the same way, it's kind of like having these enzyme bombs exploding inside the little pancreas here, causing supersized inflammation as the pancreas digests itself. This is what is meant by autodigestion. Now, the causes are very simple. Again, think anything that can block this little tiny pancreatic duct. As you can see, we have a lot of organs closely fitted together here, kind of like an apartment complex. They all share this common bile duct, which branches off into the pancreatic duct here. So, common causes is alcohol abuse from years and years of inflammation, which ends up inflaming the little duct and occluding it, or basically blocking it. Now, gallbladder disease as well, we talked about a gallstone or even inflammation that now blocks this duct. And even cystic fibrosis, where we have serious mucus with cystic fibrosis. This mucus can block the pancreatic duct. Now, a really odd one here is surgeries or a diagnostic procedure that can accidentally cause trauma and inflammation in this area. Now, this is very common with an ERCP procedure, an endoscopic retrograde coleangiopancreatography. <laughs> Big, long word. So, please write that down. ERCP. This one is highly tested. Typically used to clear gallstones or diagnose problems in the bile duct, a scope is passed through the mouth, down through the small intestine, and through the bile and pancreatic duct too. Now, if this scope accidentally scratches the duct here, it can cause major inflammation, which blocks the pancreatic enzymes from getting out, leading to pancreatitis. Now, in terms of the signs and symptoms, pain is a huge NCLEX tip. So, write this down. Epigastric pain, like heartburn, in the left upper quadrant. So, left upper quadrant pain that radiates to the back. Huge key terms right there. Write those down. The majority of the pancreas is in the upper left quadrant here, so don't let the NCLEX trick you. It's not the right upper quadrant pain that radiates to the shoulder. This is typical of gallbladder inflammation on the other side, called cholecystitis. And it's not right lower quadrant pain with rebound tenderness. That's typical of appendicitis. Now pulling from our Simple Nursing NCLEX question bank, written by the people that actually wrote the NCLEX. Here are the top missed test questions. Which client should the nurse see first? And it's a client with epigastric pain after an ERCP. Yes, just think of the double E's here. 
epigastric pain from an ERCP can erupt the pancreas, causing pancreatitis. And bruising is another critical sign. So we have Turner sign and Kuhlin sign. Turner sign is bruising or ecchymosis on the flanks or the sides of the body, and colon sign is edema and bruising around the belly button, also called the umbilicus area. So just think T for Turner sign. You can see the bruising when you turn the client. And C for colon sign, just think of a belly ring shaped like a C for colon. There's bruising around the belly button area. Now, clients can also present with liver disease symptoms too, as the liver area can get backed up from this inflammation in the bile duct, causing jaundice, that yellowing of the skin, from the elevated bilirubin. And we can also see hypotension, that low BP. This is typically from internal bleeding and even ascites, that fluid in the abdomen that makes the stomach region big and bloated with fluid. So Saunders mentions, a client admitted to the hospital, which assessment finding would be consistent of acute pancreatitis? Select all that apply. So gray-blue color at the flank, abdominal guarding and tenderness, and a big one here, left upper quadrant pain that radiates to the back. So again, write these three down and know them. In terms of labs, we have elevated enzymes, specifically amylase and lipase. Now, lipase is the biggest one here. Write that one down. It's always the most indicative of pancreatitis, so it's the most tested. We also see elevated glucose, indicating hyperglycemia. This is from the lack of insulin, as it can't get out of the pancreas too. So just think insulin puts sugar into the cell. So without insulin, well, then no sugar can go into the cell. So it ends up just sitting around in the bloodstream and therefore causing hyperglycemia, that elevated blood serum glucose. So clients may have to go on insulin momentarily. Next, we have elevated WBCs, over 10,000. And we can even see a fever from all the inflammation. And since the liver may be having trouble, it can't produce coagulation factors like normal. So we see elevated coagulation time with elevated PT and APTT. Huge risk for bleeding here and elevated bilirubin, which will cause jaundice, as mentioned before. Now, in terms of complications, typically the most deadly are the most tested. So, number one, write it down, is ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Many students get this wrong. This typically results from massive inflammation all over the body that can lead to leaky blood vessels, filling up the alveoli inside the lungs with fluid which we cover more in detail in the respiratory course. The second thing is peritonitis, the inflammation of the peritoneal cavity inside the abdomen, typically caused by bleeding from that inflamed pancreas. So we always assess for and report to the HCP, write down these top three here, a fever over 100.3, rebound tenderness, as well as a rigid or board-like abdomen. Those three are the most commonly tested out of 10,000 questions, as well as increased pain and tenderness, restlessness, and a fast heart rate and respiratory rate, known as tachycardia and tachypnea. This typically means internal bleeding, and it could mean deadly peritonitis and the patient goes septic and die. So this is a big medical emergency here. So make sure to pause the screen and write those down. Now, in terms of interventions, we always put the patient on NPO. No eating, no drinking, nothing per oral for at least 24 hours. Since eating and drinking stimulates more enzymes, which leads to more pain and more inflammation. Number two is we insert a nasogastric tube for suctioning, so an NG tube. This decreases the gastric, or basically the stomach, to cause gastric decompression. Number three is we use IV pain meds like hydromorphone, brand name Dilaudid. No morphine. A lot of students don't know this. Morphine can cause spasms inside the pancreas that can lead to more pain. Next, we use IV fluids and we also monitor glucose, specifically for hyperglycemia. Remember, the pancreas is having trouble here, so it can't release insulin. So we end up with hyperglycemia and the patient may have to go on insulin momentarily. 
Now for pharmacology, we use the acid reducers here. So antiacids, proton pump inhibitors, those end in prazole like pantoprazole, and H2 blockers like famotidine, which we cover in full detail in our pharmacology course. Now a common exam question here is after performing a physical assessment and obtaining vital signs for a client with acute pancreatitis, which nursing intervention is priority? IV fluids and pain control. And Saunders had a question. A physician orders were written for a client admitted to the hospital with acute pancreatitis. Which order requires follow-up by the nurse? Full liquid diet. Yes, remember, clients should be NPO for at least 24 hours. So we must call the doctor and question the order. Now, eventually, clients will progress to a bland, low-fat, low-sugar diet. In order to give the pancreas enough time to make lipase and insulin to break down the fat and let sugar into the cell. So write it down. A diet low fat and low in sugars. And we also add enzymes with meals. Now Hesse mentions, which foods will be most appropriate for a patient who recently had a bout of acute pancreatitis? Select all that apply. So remember, before looking at the options, just think low fat and low sugar. So fried chicken, do you think that's okay? No, there's way too much greasy fat. How about potato chips? Nope, too much fat. How about grilled chicken and a baked potato? Yes, the key term there is grilled chicken. How about reduced fat cheese and whole wheat crackers? Yes, the reduced fat is the key term there. And whole milk with cookies. No, no, no Santa Claus here. Whole milk has a lot of fat and sugar inside the cookies are not good. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by Nursing School Topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.